Are you gonna knock or am I supposed to just come out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm running, the, I'm running the buzzer. Oh, the buzzer but doesn't work. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Well, this works, this is, all right, should we just, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Just, oh, just open the door when you're ready. Okay. Hi, I've opened the door to the Vintage Synthesizer Museum. Perfect, can I come inside? Please do. Thank you. Wow. These are synthesizers. My name's Lance. This is the Vintage Synthesizer Museum. How long have you been in this space? We've been in this space for seven months. Where were you before? We were in Oakland, California for eight years. Yeah. There were a lot of reasons for the move from <laughs> Oakland to LA. But LA's got more people, more people doing music. The beginning of this synth journey was roughly 15 years ago. I ended up kind of being like a synth dealer. I was like buying, selling, refurbishing synthesizers and just had all these synths coming through. I was in a position to put this collection together, so I did. What kind of people do you have coming through the museum? People who just want to play a certain synth they've never seen before, and then people who are composing stuff for TV shows and movies, and you know, people who are doing hip hop, mm -hmm. R&B, weird experimental stuff. The first synth that started this for me was a Yamaha CS. 20M, we've got the Yamaha CS70M, which is related to the CS20M. The signal routing of the space uh, is repetitive in that everything's going into one of six mixers. Uh, the main left right output of each mixer is routed to the central recording interface, which is then routed to a computer. At each mixer, nothing's labeled, but there's a QR code. If you scan the QR code, it'll tell you which channel of the mixer the synths are routed to. It'll tell you which effect sends the effects are routed to. There's also a patch bay at each mixer where you could tap the synths individually pre-mixer. Um, and it'll tell you which synths are on which channel on the patch bay. When you pull up the list of the synths that are going into the mixer, if you click the name of the synth, like you click Yamaha CS70M, the manual for the synth will come up. At the recording interface, there's also another patch bay here where you can tap each mixer pre interface. So if you wanted to use your own interface, there's several ways to do that. And there's also a wide selection of vintage, mostly analog effects that are accessible through the patch base over here. The original spot in Oakland was not much smaller than this. It was, it was slightly smaller than this, but it was divided up into two rooms. It was a former recording studio. So there was like a smaller control room and then a larger live room. The bigger room had all the larger poly synths and the smaller room had the smaller mono synths. And this is kind of organized in a similar way in that everything is just where it fits. Nothing's ordered as far as like monophonic here, polyphonic there, or you know, ordered in the years they came out or anything like that. It's just where it'll fit. The largest chunk of time these synths occupy is roughly 1973 to 1983. The ARP 2600 was owned by Joe Zawinol. He was in a band called Weather Report, or he, had a band called Weather Report. He also played with Miles Davis. This Pearl Syncussion uh, belonged to the dude that did Fad Gadget, Steve Picaro, supposedly owned this Jupiter 6. Everyone wants to think that like, I have like a secret synth network where I get good deals on amazing synths, hard to find stuff. The you know, reality of the situation is I go to all the same places everybody else does, Craigslist, eBay, what have you. I'm just like more persistent. And when I contact people through Craigslist, I don't lowball them. I offer them more money than they're asking for things. And that usually gets you priority. People do approach me all the time, but, but they're hoping that I will give them top, top dollar <laughs> and that they won't have to pay taxes and fees. And uh, that has not worked out yet. This was acquired over 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never just dropped uh, a bunch of money, yeah. you know because I've just never had that much money. I would like to get a memory Moog in here. That would be cool. I never really think about it, but if it happened one day, that would be cool. 
is there something you'd recommend as like a, an entry point? Yes, your computer. Get SoftSense for free, get VCV Rack for free, get FL Studio and learn Sense for free on your computer, make music with synthesizers using your computer for free. You do not need hardware. I never really made real electronic music till I got a computer. Um, you know, I was doing stuff with like a four track cassette recorder and did not have sequencers or anything like that. So I was trying to imitate electronic music, but I never did it successfully until I got a computer and I was using all bootleg software. All of it was free. And, and that's what really kind of bloomed this passion more. Though I was obsessed. Well, I wanted synthesizers before that, but, but yeah. But I would not stress about getting hardware synthesizers. Says the man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing too is, you know, you, you can get free synths online and you can also come here and use every, you know, this is basically the greatest hits of uh, classic synths. So, uh, so yeah, don't buy a synth, use them for free on, online and pay to come here <laughs> to use them all year. Thank you.